It's Wednesday. Welcome to the Trent England Show. We're back up at the Capitol. Alicia Priest, the uh, head of the OEA, just started speaking. I had some people on social media lecturing me yesterday. Well, it's not about the union. The union's running this show up here. I understand that a lot of people are here. They don't They don't understand that. They don't know who's organizing all of this. They don't know about the, uh, the case before the Supreme Court that's going to be decided in June. I, I understand all of that, but still, you have to recognize this is the OEA show with a supporting role played by the AFT. Those are affiliates of very, very left-wing based uh, labor unions that operate out of Washington, D.C., that is an important fact to recognize for, for all sides. It's not dispositive on any of the issues that people are talking about here, and that's what we want to get to next on the show. I'm just going to wander around, talk to some folks who are here, ask some teachers. The governor signed the rest of the legislation that increases taxes, increases teacher pay. It's going to raise Oklahoma teacher pay to uh, preliminary estimates indicate 11th in the nation when you factor in cost of living. And look, I, it's not just me that factors in cost of living. I was reading some reports from the Center for Budget Policy Priorities. That's a left wing. George Soros funded organization and they adjust things for cost of living at least when they're looking at blue states and trying to force them to spend even more money on the things that well everything that the left wants those states to spend more money on so look 11th in the nation teacher pay in Oklahoma that is uh, that's a huge raise for teachers huge raise huge raise for anybody we're going to ask about that uh, right now Okay, so I'm here with a teacher from Harding Fine Arts Academy. Can you tell us your name and what you teach? My name is Olivia Amundsen, and I teach advanced placement government and politics. So I'm right, you know, home. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm practicing what I teach my kids. So you teach at a, at a charter school. Is your school out on strike? Yes, we are. And our uh, board and our principal and uh, the student body and the parents are all very supportive of all of us. Okay, I know a lot of charter schools are not out on, on strikes, but I know some are. So, yeah. um, so do you do you get a raise from what the governor just signed the rest of that package? Do you get a raise from what the legislature passed last week at your charter school? Yes, yes, we do. Okay, I we have problems with that raise. I don't think it's what exactly OEA wants, so that's why we're still here. So and Andrew Fallon hasn't signed it either. She she did. She signed it yesterday. She signed it. Okay. So, sorry, that's, <laughs> no, that, that's okay. She just signed it yesterday. Okay. So so uh, I mean it's. It's a raise that's going to take Oklahoma teachers, when you adjust for cost of living, to 11th highest paid in the country. What What's the problem with that raise? There's, I mean, I think it's it's the his, it's the historical context of the raise. It's been since, I don't know, 10 or 15 years since we've gotten a raise. I think it's about time. I mean, yes, I'm not arguing with the money. I think the, the time is what's more important. And not only that, like, I don't even have textbooks in my classroom. Um, everything that my students get... I had to make and create for them. Um, so it's not just about the raise, it's also about funding for the classroom and things like that too. Are you frustrated? Charter schools get funded less than other public schools and the OEA actually that organized this rally is a big part of trying to, to keep out charter schools and keep them funded less. I mean, do you have a problem with that? Well, of course, but I can understand, but I understand it. I understand both arguments against charter schools and for, so I don't really, I mean, I understand why OEA would want to do that so your school is a great school we have viewers all around the state and even all around the country tell tell folks as we wrap up what's so great about because I know it's a great school tell them what's so great about your charter school what's so cool about my school is that it's one of the most diverse I mean I I mean I grew up white privilege I went to a private school my whole life I went to Bishop McGinnis for high school um, Harding Fun Arts Academy is one of the most diverse schools I've ever been a part of um, so there's lots of it breeds tolerance diversity breeds tolerance um, we have unbelievable teachers that have been teaching for 10 or 15 years, and we create a very cool academic and diverse environment. And I'm proud to be part of it. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so uh, tell, tell me your name and, and uh, where you teach. My name is Kara Bowerman. I teach art and coach cross country and track at Edmund North High School. Okay, so uh, uh, <laughs> we've got to, okay, there we go. We got to, we got to, <laughs> I, that's, yeah, you're, it's making, it's making the, uh, it's making the dog upset. So the, the, the governor, what's that? Okay. Oh, that was good. It's live video, Clint. So, so the governor, I mean, despite what people say, she did sign this big pay raise, tax increase package, part of it last week, part of it yesterday. Um, it's, a, it's a big raise, right? Uh, yeah, it, it is a nice raise, but um, we're not here for the raise. Any teacher here will tell you that. It's it's the funding for the kids. It's it's the funding for our classroom, for our supplies. It's We are all here for the kids. We work for the kids 100% of the time, every single day, including the last three days. 
Well, so, I mean, some people have looked at the, the OEA's demands and looked at what the legislature did and noticed the fact that, I mean, the pay raise is bigger than what the OEA asked for in the first, in the first year, at least. And uh, one question I've been asking people is, is the raise too big? Should they have allocated more of that money to school supplies, to textbooks, to things like that? Because um, it seems like what we're hearing these last three days is that the legislature made the wrong decision, put too much of it in one place instead of another. Do you agree with that? What do you think? Oh, I mean, there's a lot of funding that needs to be put in a lot of different place, places. I could definitely see why people could say, well, if you don't want the raise, then put it in funding. But it, it, we just need funding across the board, um, and, and we just got to find a way to do that, a solution to do that. Do you, I mean, local school boards write school budgets, and, uh, and usually with the uh, advice of the school superintendents, maybe the superintendents write them and the school boards approve them. Um, it seems like all the conversation is about what goes on at the state level and not as much about what has gone on in local districts making funding decisions. Do you, th do you think that's fair? Do you think some of this conversation should be with, with school boards and school superintendents? Yeah, I do. Yeah, they definitely have have things that they can do in each district. I'm in Edmond where they they do put a lot of funding in different things, um, and, and the teachers are supported um, really well. In smaller districts, it could be a district thing. Yes, totally. Okay. Um, anything else you want to say? Um, we're just here with the same message. We just want to be heard. Um, we're here for the kids 100%. I don't want anyone to think that this is about anything other than that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, I'm here with a teacher from Ponca City. Uh, your name and what do you teach? Uh, my name is Zach Murray and I teach high school biology. Okay, so the governor just yesterday signed the rest of this big package. It's, it's a big raise. You know, I mean, do you know how much you're going to get? Um, for my particular step, I know it's between 5500 and 6000 but it's not about the pay raises at this point. It's about making sure we have funding in our classrooms. But that's a bit, I mean, that's, I mean, do you think that, that there are many kids in your classrooms who par whose parents are going to get that big of raises here? Uh, I'm not sure on that, but again, it's not about the pay raises. It's we need funding in our classroom. We have textbooks that are falling apart. We have desks that are falling apart. So we don't have the resources in the room to do what we need. So th did the legislature make a mistake then? Should they have put the money towards school supplies, textbooks, curriculum, things like that? I think they made a mistake in not putting additional funding into the funding formula. Um, I think they made a mistake in choosing to repeal the hotel motel tax and leaving some other tax dollars on the table that they could have passed to make sure that we could do the pay raise to keep teachers in the state, but also ensure we have proper funding for our classrooms. But th there is, I mean, you do recognize, though, I mean, there's finite resources and there are a lot of Oklahoma teachers who aren't here. There are a lot of people who, um, I mean, I've, I've talked to teachers who aren't here. They're not going to come here. Maybe their districts are not on strike who, who disagree. So what do you say to those teachers? Um, you know, I would say, you know, obviously I disagree with their opinion. Um, it doesn't do us any good to give a pay raise to teachers but not have funding to have the resources we need in the classroom. Um, I'm not able to get some of the internet resources that I need for some of my classes to be as effective as I can be because we don't have that funding. And the pay raise, while it's nice and it's appreciated, we still need the rest of the funding to be able to have the resources we need for our students to get the best quality education they can. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm here with a couple teachers from Tulsa. Would you just tell me your names and where you teach? And then I'll ask you both, and then I'll just ask questions to her, per, per our prior arrangement. Shelly Diedrich, uh, Skelly Primary in Tulsa. Stephanie Worley, Skelly Primary, Tulsa. Great. So the governor signed this, uh, part of it last week, part of it yesterday. Um, she, she signed a, a big pay raise for teachers. What do you, what do you think about that? You know, it's, it's not about the pay raise. It, it's not about the teachers. It's about the students because, after all, that's what we're there for. We're there for the students. We're not there for our families. We're not there for ourselves. We're there to educate Oklahoma. Isn't, isn't that challenging, though? I mean, I think most Oklahomans feel like up until last week, we were all told it's teacher pay. That's the big, that's the big thing. There are other issues, but teacher pay is the big thing. I mean, we've had this debate in the legislature for years now. We had state question 779. And, and I think a lot of people feel like all of a sudden we're hearing a different message. What, what do you say to that? I, I say, you know, it's, they've not funded us for so long. And teachers are the most caring, unforgiving, or forgiving people that there are. And, you know, we, we overlook a lot of things. And we have just said enough is enough. And our districts are backing us, our school boards are backing us, our parents are backing us, our community members are backing us, our churches are backing us. 
And, you know, it all comes down to the children of Oklahoma, which they are our future. I mean, there have been a lot of stories. I follow the Tulsa world, even though I'm based here in Oklahoma City. There have been a lot of stories about Tulsa public schools. Uh, the Tulsa world has surveyed teachers and found that a lot of teachers are very frustrated with the administration and the district that more teachers may be leaving Tulsa public schools, especially senior teachers, because of lack of administrative support rather than funding issues. Do you, I mean, you, your teachers in Tulsa, do you agree with that finding? No, I, I totally disagree with that. This is my 26th year, and I was at one building for 20 years because of the administration in that building. Um, you know, your administration is there in the trenches with you every day, and I have not yet met an administrator that won't buckle down and get with us and do what they ask us to do. They get right alongside of us. I know I've talked to teachers in Oklahoma City who, who feel differently. The surveys seem to suggest it's different. I mean, uh, what what do you think is the answer? I mean, you mentioned the school districts themselves have actually shut shut down. It's not really that teachers have walked off the job. School districts have, have decided to shut shut the schools. What what do you think it would take um, to, uh, to to get the school districts to choose to reopen? Well, and until until they meet our demands until they find more funding, which funding is out there, um, then I think as long as teachers say, you know what, we have enough sick days, we have enough personal days, we're going to be off the job until we get an action from the people that we elected in here to do this job, and they're not doing it. Well, I mean, in, in their defense, they've been elected. I mean, a lot of them were elected and signed pledges not to raise taxes, and that's how they got elected. So apparently the people of Oklahoma... Uh, share that that position quite a bit. I mean, you know, we're we're a republic. We have elections. Um, don't you think that if they sign a pledge not to raise taxes, they should they should stick with that and keep their promise? I, I think they need to do what's right for the people and the students of Oklahoma. And you know what? Things change. Things change every day, and they need to look at the whole picture and not just something that got them elected. Thank you very much. Thank you. So there you have it, our Wednesday sample of uh, participants in the fake strike. Of course, it's fake when they shut the schools down. I know I point that out every time, but I just feel like it has to be done. I, I've got to say, we, we all have to hand it to the Oklahoma Education Association that has organized all of this. The National Education Association, obviously, uh, very involved in uh, in orchestrating all this. Maybe, it's, they, maybe they brought in some of the big guns on messaging. It is absolutely, it's a master class in messaging when you consider that up until last week, everybody was talking about teacher pay. Teacher pay was the thing. Teacher pay was what needed to happen. The legislature did teacher pay, even maybe overdid teacher pay. The legislature gave teachers a, a tremendous raise. Some teachers are going to get seven, dollars $8,000 if they've been on the job long enough. And so this week, what's the message? The message is textbooks are falling apart, desks are falling apart, there's not enough money for the kids, whatever that means. Of course, most of the money that goes, quote-unquote, to the kids or to the classroom is actually teacher pay and benefits. Uh, but uh, nobody, nobody seems even to know that up here today at the Capitol. Obviously, a much smaller crowd than we had. I think the last two days. That's um, that's that's my estimate of it all. But still, you have uh, you have buses, school buses, very nice looking tour buses showing up, bringing people to the uh, state capitol today. Legislature due to convene later on this afternoon. Uh, but uh, it's uncertain what they can do, considering they already did so much and the messaging changed. I mean, who's to say if they did something else that the OEA wouldn't simply pivot one more time and find something else? Um, one of the most interesting interviews I thought, you saw it a few minutes ago, charter school teachers, many charter schools are operating not striking because, frankly, um, if they go on strike, the kids are only there by choice. Kids can go somewhere else from a charter school. Uh, not like many of the kids who are in traditional public schools where the families have uh, don't have that same kind of a choice, perhaps, as they have in a, uh, in, in a, in a, in a, in a uh, charter school. Uh, but uh, a, little bit of, uh, a little bit of noise behind us there. Uh, but uh, many Oklahoma schools are in session. If you're in a school district or a charter school uh, that is not striking, or if you're a teacher out there watching who is not on strike, I'd love to get your views if you want to share those with me. I've had some shared with me, with me anonymously. That's fine. That's very helpful. Uh, if you're willing to go on record and talk about it, I think one of the big challenges right now is that the people who are here are people who believe hook, line, and sinker what the OEA is telling them. Uh, they're people who don't understand that most of the money that goes into the classroom actually is salary, 
and benefits, and you heard that over and over again. Uh, I know there are a lot of folks out there who work in schools, teachers and other folks who work in schools, who understand all that. Love to hear from you, either in the comments on Facebook. You can send me a direct message. You can chat with me on Twitter. I've been engaging with a lot of folks on Twitter, helping uh, point out, break down some of the numbers on uh, what the funding that the governor signed yesterday, what that actually means for Oklahoma, for our place in the rankings. A lot of folks have been curious about that, and I think we have some of the first numbers out about that. Thanks for watching the Trending on Show today. If they're still up at the Capitol tomorrow, we'll probably be back here with, uh, I don't know, maybe with more interviews. If you have questions you think I should ask, let me know. Thanks for watching the Trend England Show. Subscribe on YouTube, iTunes, find, find us on SoundCloud, find us, uh, find me on Twitter at Trend England, uh, and the whole show archive, of course, is at ocpathink.org. Thanks again for watching.